All right, let's talk about legal access. There are different ways. If your client says to you, um, I'm depressed, I saw this thing on Netflix, I want to try psychedelics. Uh, there are, in fact, some ways that your client can do that legally. They don't have to break the law. One option is ketamine clinics. It's a Schedule Three substance. It's available by prescription right now. I know quite a few clinics in the Portland area. I don't know where, where you all are from, but there's probably some ketamine clinics somewhere in, in your vicinity that you can refer clients to. Here are some pictures from some, some people I know who have ketamine-assisted psychotherapy clinics. And you can see that these look like living rooms or therapy offices. You can see both of these you've got on the left. You're kind of um, sitting on a back jack on the floor. On the right, it looks like a mattress on the floor. And you just sort of hang out with your therapist and you take ketamine. A ketamine-assisted psychotherapy clinic uh, depending on state regulations, uh, will often administer ketamine in, as an intramuscular injection or a sublingual uh, trochee. It's it's kind of like a gum, but it it dissolves pretty quickly and it's absorbed um, in the through the mucus lining in your mouth. Uh, ketamine is not well absorbed in the stomach, so ketamine can be uh, absorbed through this kind of gum that you like chew and it dissolves. And you take this ketamine. Uh, with a therapist in the room with you, and you have these very nice living room-like environments. Here's some more. Here we have on the left the Ames Institute in Seattle. This is, in fact, a therapy dog, which is uh, a member of the clinic. I assume, I don't know, I didn't ask, but I assume that the therapy dog is not present during the ketamine sessions. Maybe he is. I don't know. Uh, but that looks like a really nice chair. I, I wish I had a chair like that in my office. Uh, and over on the right, this is maybe the most, uh, for lack of a better word, hippie-ish uh, setup that I've seen. But you can see here, someone takes ketamine and they lay back in this recliner, and then they they have uh, sound healing through gongs and bowls and drums. And so that, uh, I don't know exactly what that experience is like, but uh, my point just being there's a variety. If you refer a client to a ketamine-assisted psychotherapy clinic, there are a lot of different ways that they can lay down and have this experience. And it can be very um, kind of nice. You know, there's plants and there's soft lighting. Maybe there's dogs. I don't know. But it's just kind of a relaxing environment. This is in contrast to a ketamine treatment center. I don't have any pictures of that, but um, this is worth noting. I'm talking, I've been talking about ketamine assisted psychotherapy clinics right? So you're doing psychotherapy with a therapist, and ketamine happens to be on board. This is in contrast to a ketamine treatment clinic. In a ketamine treatment clinic, ketamine is a biochemical agent, and that's it. It is a psychoplastogen. You go in, um, it, it's, it's like a doctor's office. There's fluorescent lights, there's that kind of general antiseptic smell around, there's nurses in uniforms with a stethoscope and all of that stuff. And you go in and you receive a treatment. A ketamine treatment is usually an intravenous infusion. It lasts about an hour. And maybe a nurse comes in to check on you, just kind of see how you're doing. And then at the end of the hour, they make sure you're kind of back to normal. And then you go about your way. There's no psychology involved. There's no therapy in a ketamine treatment center. And if the client happens to have psychedelic or dissociative effects, well, that's just one of those annoying side effects that we can't quite get rid of, but we can try to control for. So ketamine treatment, it's a very biological process. And ketamine-assisted psychotherapy is a very psychological, perhaps spiritual process, quite different. So worth pointing out, if you want to do some referrals, if you want to send your clients to, to get some ketamine, or if they're coming to you from having done ketamine, you want to know, was this like a ketamine treatment, a biological agent, or was this a psychotherapy center with, you know, flowers and lights and plants and candles and stuff, right? Quite different experience. Both of which are legally available today. And all of these places that I have pictures from here, they're open and they're accepting referrals. Uh, 
But maybe your client doesn't want to do ketamine. Maybe they're more interested in psilocybin or MDMA. The, the main option here is to join a clinical trial. There are three there are three phases of clinical trials. There's more. You know, some people can talk about phase zero or phase 1.5, phase four, but eh, that's getting too in the weeds. We don't have to deal with that. Uh, we're just going to simplify it a little bit. There's three phases of clinical trials. Phase one, that's the work I used to do at Yale. You have healthy people and you're just seeing like, is it okay to give people this drug? Is it safe? Like what happens? What, what does the body do when you give someone this drug? Uh, step two is then you would say, oh, well, maybe this drug is helpful for depression. So then you give it to people with depression. Uh, often it's in a larger sample size, but not always. And again, you're just kind of looking for safety and dosing and like what happens to the body when you give a depressed person this drug. And then phase three, the most interesting stuff, the stuff that gets the biggest press is these are larger studies. Uh, this slide says up to thousands, but there's been no psychedelic phase three trials with thousands of participants. It hasn't happened. It's been in the low hundreds. Um, but in the phase three trials, it's confirming efficacy and safety. It's looking at side effects and it's comparing, for example, psilocybin to escitalopram. We're looking at how does this new treatment compare to currently existing treatments? So your client might be interested in joining a clinical trial. And so it's worth noting if this is phase one, two, or three. Here is a graph I made of phase two and three clinical trials over time. I excluded phase one for simplicity. And we can see uh, not a whole lot until about five or six years ago, and then a giant uptick. Uh, the darker line is psilocybin. There's 20 uh, psilocybin clinical trials that have begun this year, um, as of whenever I made this slide, probably in May. MDMA, uh, fewer, but still quite a bit. And that um, there's, there's quite a few of those. I didn't include ketamine in here because it's already available. 